Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. We welcome devotees to our weekday morning Bhagavatam class. It's so nice to see so many devotees online. And thank you for giving us your association. This morning, we will be hearing a class from His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Maharaj. And today, March, we'll be giving a class on Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter, Canto 1, Chapter 3, Verse 42. Maharaj, it's all yours. Hare Krishna. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srimad Bhagavatam 1342. Satu Sasra Vayam Masa Maharajam Parikshitam Prayogavistam Gangayam Paritam Paramarsabihi Sukadev Goswami, the son of Yasadev, in his turn delivered the Bhagavatam to the great Emperor Parikshit. He sat surrounded by sages on the bank of the Ganga, awaiting death without taking food or drink. Shri Prabhupada's purport. All transcendental messages are received properly in the chain of disciplic succession. This disciplic succession is called parampara, unless therefore Bhagavatam or any other Vedic literatures are received through the parampara, the reception of knowledge is not bona fide. Vyasadeva delivered the message to Sukadeva Goswami, and from Sukadeva Goswami, Sutta Goswami received the message. One should therefore receive the message of Bhagavatam from Sutta Goswami or from his representative, and not from any irrelevant interpreter. Emperor Pariksit received the information of his death in time. He had once left his kingdom and family and sat down on the bank of the Ganges to fast till death. All great sages, rishis, philosophers, mystics, etc., were there due to his imperial position. He offered many suggestions about his immediate duty, and at last it was settled that he would hear from Sukadeva Goswami about Lord Krishna. Thus the Bhagavatam was spoken to him. Tripad Sankaracharya, who preached my body philosophy and stressed the impersonal feature of the absolute, also recommend that one must take shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna, for there is no hope of gaining from debate. Indirectly, Tripad Sankaracharya admitted that what he preached in the flowery grammatical interpretations of the Vedanta Sutra cannot help it, one at any time of death at the time of death. At the critical hour of death, one must recite the name of Govinda. This is the recommendation of all great transcendentalists. Sukadeva Goswami had long ago stated the same truth, that at the end one must remember Narayan. That is the essential essence of all scriptural activities. In pursuance of this eternal truth, Srimad Bhagavatam was heard by Emperor Prikshit and was recited by the able Sukadeva Goswami. And both the speaker and the receiver of the messages of Bhagavatam were duly delivered by the same medium. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhistam Stapitam Yen Bhutale Swayam Rupa Pidam Mayam Dadati Swapadati Kam Pandeham Shiguru Shi Utapa De Kamalam Shigurum Vaishnavam Scha Shi Rupam Sagujatam Sahaganat Raganatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorbani Pacharine 
clear Vishesa Sunya Vari Pasyatya De Satarine Dai Vanchakopata Rubes Chakri Pasindu Paeva Chapatitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So after uh, speaking of the different incarnations, although not successfully given, Bhagavatam doesn't give the incarnations in the successful order. Where in the Lagu Bhagavatam written by Rupa Goswami, he does. This is, but Bhagavatam is the king of all scriptures. And so, although it presents knowledge in somewhat a less chronological order, it is still the most authoritative scripture. Um, hmm. Somebody posted the Bhagavatam up there. Picture of the Bhagavatam. Uh, yeah, it's nice to go back to the verse because there's also points that we want to see. <laughs> and so the um, the presentation um, is now concluded after the key verse number 28. And now there is a glorification of the Bhagavatam for the remaining of the chapter and the whole process of hearing knowledge from the proper authority. Well, this is, this is a, a point that Prabhupada makes at the very beginning of his uh, explanations on the verse. Whereas one sh must hear uh, that knowledge, which is, which is bona fide, and coming in line of those who are connected to Lord Sri Krishna. And that is called Sampadaya, or a chain of disciplical teachers who realize, who practice the message, and who realizes the message, and can also speak the message in the same way to others. The example is given that you have a tree with the mango on the very top of the tree. If you shake the tree, there's a good chance that the mango might bounce off the branches and then become damaged. But if someone goes up and climbs there and grabs the mango and hands it down very carefully to the person on the bottom through a series of people, then the mango it will stay in its natural, pure. Uh, essence. So in the same way, transcendental knowledge is um, coming from Krishna. Krishna is the source of everything. He's also the source of transcendental knowledge. Or he's actually the source of all knowledge. So in order to receive that, his representative, the pure devotee, must give it according to how Krishna explains it. That's why when Srila Prabhupada did his Bhagavad Gita, he called it Bhagavad Gita as it is. Uh, where previously Bhagavad Gita was presented with a lot of different interpretations and various types of ideas just to stimulate the reader's interest by giving something different, something new. But actually this simply causes confusion and giving the knowledge, and the knowledge actually becomes what is a, a lost. <laughs> the one has to hear in that specific succession. Here we see something very interesting. When Sukadev goes, I mean, I'm sorry, when Maharaj Pariksit sat down on the bank, because of his imperial position, as Srila Prabhupada mentioned, so many great sages, mystics, philosophers, and others came down to, um, to offer him respects and to give advice. He was getting a lot of it. He was getting advice from different persons on what he should be doing in his last week that he had left on earth. But until, and, but everyone became quiet and everyone we stood up 
when Sukadev Goswami arrived on the scene because everyone could understand that he was the most qualified to give the knowledge and therefore out of respect for him everyone remained there in a position of listening and then of course he took the seat of honor after being duly rec uh, welcomed and uh, he was qualified and everyone could see one of the ways they could tell he was qualified as called, uh, there is a uh, science called physiognomy. Physiognomy. Physiognomy is that one's physical features on their body are, certain, are formed in a certain way to represent a great personality. So they could observe that he had all of the 32 uh, characteristics in the category of physiognomy of a great soul. So simply by seeing him, they understood that here was a great, great personality. They didn't even have to listen to him. They simply could just see. And um, therefore, that was one of the reasons that they all took a back seat. And Sukadev Goswami was in the position because Sukadev Goswami is a self-realized personality. Um, a little bit about self, about Sukadev Goswami. He stayed within the womb of his mother for 16 years, not wanting to come out and be part of the material world. And finally, on the call of his father, Vyasadev, he came out, and then as soon as he did, he just left. He didn't stay around to get involved with any kind of family affairs. He just simply left and went walking in the direction of the forest. His father pursuing him, calling him to come back. But the only one, the only thing his father got was the echo of his own voice. So, um, yeah, so this is a little bit about him. He was completely renounced as soon as he appeared and fully grown at the time also. And of course, he knew he had a mission. Being Trikala Gyan, he knows past, present, and future. So he knew one of the reasons why he appeared, and that was to enlighten this powerful Maharsh Pariksit, was the emperor of the entire world. He was a devotee of the Lord. He was the grandson of, of Arjuna, and uh, he uh, was the last heir to the throne of the Pandava dynasty, the Kuru dynasty. And uh, he was very special in all categories of his existence, being very learned, being very, being spiritually realized, so many qualifications he had. But here it mentions that he, uh, when he heard about his uh, time to leave uh, the world was coming within a week, this was the arrangement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He was powerful enough to not to have to accept his curse. He was cursed by a, a Brahmin boy who was 12 years old. This Brahmin boy was influenced by Kali. When Kali was uh, banished by Maharaj Pariksha um, to leave uh, his kingdom, Kali didn't know where to go. When Kali was beating the, the legs of a bull, he didn't know where to go because he said, everywhere is your kingdom, so where do I go? And then he said, you can, you can go where there's these four Sinful activities are, and that was illicit sex, intoxication, meeting, and gambling. But then Kali said, well, nowhere in your kingdom is this going on. That was the power of Maharaj Pariksha. He had complete material power and complete spiritual uh, rule. And the way he ruled was completely according to Shastra. And so he was a Rajarsi in the real sense of the word. But Kali entered into the minds of the fallen Brahmins, and this particular boy 
was influenced by Kali to um, curse Maharaj Pariksit. Maharaj Pariksit had the power to, as we mentioned, to reverse it or not to accept it, but he didn't because he understood it was the, the arrangement of the Lord. And the Lord did arrange that so the speaking of the Srimad Bhagavatam could go on for the benefit of the entire world eternally. Not just for that time, but for eternally, Bhagavatam could be presented. Bhagavatam was a little known scripture at that time, and even now today, just yesterday, I was talking to some devotees that were making a presentation on Bhagavatam. These were some young, younger adults. They were in their 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. Uh, in their presentation, they correctly allow, outlined that people are very much familiar with um, Bhagavad Gita, but hardly anyone knows about Srimad Bhagavatam, even today. Only the devotees who have taken shelter of Srila Prabhupada's movement really understand Bhagavatam's essence. Well, Bhagavatam is, and you'll come to that verse, I think it's either the next verse or the verse after, I think it's the next verse where Bhagavatam is non-different than Krishna. When Krishna left the planet, Srimad Bhagavatam remained as his, men, as his representative to enlighten the world in transcendental knowledge. So uh, one should receive this Bhagavatam not from some, as Prabhupada says, irrelevant interpreter. So irrelevant means he doesn't know the meaning of Bhagavatam, he doesn't know the purpose of Bhagavatam. He presents it according to his academic uh, studies of Bhagavatam. You can't learn Bhagavatam simply by reading it. You have to hear it from or in disciplic succession as given. And that is the way to receive this knowledge, submissive oral reception from a qualified speaker. Or in the case of Sri Brasila Prabhupada, he, he wrote it down in such a way that we could all understand it, at least at our level of understanding. Of course, even many of us still have a hard time understanding what Prabhupada is saying, because Bhagavatam is so transcendental that it takes a lifetime of study to actually break through the meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam, although we can get a glimpse simply by contacting it in a regular everyday fashion. Therefore, it says, Nasta Prayeshu Abhidresha Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavate Uttama Slohe Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. The one should every day hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, this is important. It's not only important and essential, it's one of the regulative principles of devotional practice. Bhagavatam must be a daily affair for each and every member of Srila Prabhupada's movement. Hopefully you want to expand that all the way around the world to include everyone so they can understand what is the goal of life. And Bhagavatam contains all knowledge. Anything you want to know about any subject matter, you will find within the Srimad Bhagavatam. There are 10 major subjects, with Krishna being the ultimate principle of all the subjects being explained. In other words, his shelter is the asraya, or the complete principle of Bhagavatam. But Bhagavatam deals with nine other subject matters. And within those categories of subject matter, Srila Prabhupada expands the Bhagavatam verses into the Bhaktivedanta purports to really give us a deep understanding of so many types of subject matters related to what are the pastimes that are going on. For instance, family life. There's a lot of talk about family life. And then within, within the category of family life, there are so many categories of considerations, activities, principles. So all that becomes expanded upon by Srila Prabhupada and his Bhaktivedanta purports. That's just one example. So the stress on this particular uh, verse is very much important 
as a foundation for receiving knowledge. It has to be given by someone who is uh, also Bhagavatam. There's Bhagavatam person and Bhagavatam, we call it Bhagavat, Bhagavat, Bhagavat person and Bhagavat book. Therefore, Bhagavat book has to be heard from Bhagavat person. And that way one will receive the message as it is. And therefore, what does that mean? One will get the benefit of what is being given. Otherwise, there could be so many speculations, so many, what we say, and what they call it, inter interpretations, in interpolations. <laughs> um, you know, it's very fashionable, particularly in Western countries, and even now spreading in every area of the world, to like to add something to something, to change something, to do something a little bit different than what has been given. This is a very, this is a very uh, common disease in Western societies that people are not satisfied with whatever they're doing. So they're always looking for doing it someday different or doing something different completely. And that consciousness starts to spill over into spiritual life when devotees also like to, well, yeah, I, I, I read Srimad Bhagavatam from Srila Prabhupada. Now I'll go outside and see if I can find another commentator on Bhagavatam and get more information. But that, that type of statement just indicates a person's lack of understanding of Prabhupada's Bhagavatam because Prabhupada's Bhagavatam cannot be understood simply by reading it once or twice. As Prabhupada said, every word will take at least, uh, well, Prabhupada said it in a more direct way, every verse takes at least one month to learn and he said it a few times, once, once in an outside discussion with a German, um, uh, German teacher, uh, Professor Dr. Durkheim, in a morning walk conversation with other devotees in Germany. And in other times in lectures, he said, Bhagavatam cannot be understood so easily. It takes lifetimes to understand Bhagavatam. So with that much of an understanding, one should carefully read and hear Bhagavatam. And of course, there's a process for learning that. Aside from hearing it from the perfect person, one should reflect on the knowledge as one hears it. We hear, we see, as we go through the Bhagavatam, Emperor Parikshit is asking questions in relationship to what Sukadeva Goswami is saying. He's listening, he's hearing, but also there are many, many questions which automatically arise when one carefully hears from the perfect authority. This is one of the indications that one is listening carefully or properly is that questions will come to the mind because in the speaking, not everything can be given simply by the speaking. Because within the words, there are so many considerations that one can, in other words, you can look at it from different angles of vision. So those different angles of vision are come up, uh, up as questions from the devotees who are hearing, seeing it from different angles and also uh, trying to understand it in relationship to their own day-to-day -day life and their day-to-day -day practice. So questions are very much uh, a part of the process of learning. Cl questions for clarification, questions for additional information. These uh, questions are important to understand, uh, to, to apply, and that way one goes uh, farther into the knowledge given. I was just talking to one very learned devotee yesterday and he was telling me about one, not on one particular state uh, line. It says, um, what was the line? It was, um, I think it was, it was like Sri, 
Narayan Uvacha. I think it was Narayan. But in that Sri Narayan Uvacha, him, himself and a, and a few other devotees, three or four other devotees, were unpacking it and found out in relationship to that, they found, they found 29 different points just in the word Sri Narayan Uvacha. So this is an example of how when one carefully with some understanding approaches the Bhagavatam, they can find within a simple line hundreds of meanings. <laughs> Just like this, like this purport here that we are, you know, discussing. I'm just just skimming the very surface of this purport, just mentioning a few things. But this purport and verse, we could discuss for weeks <laughs> and come up with newer and original ideas based on our discussion. It's unlimited. And Srila Prabhupada gives the example of his own spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. When he was in Dhaka, uh, he was speaking on the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Janma, what is it? Janma Yayas Yataha. In that verse, he spoke three months on the same verse each day, approximately two hours for every presentation, and every day for, th for three months, not covering the same points every day just expanding the knowledge more and more. Just on the verse, that there was no purport. It was just that one verse, the first verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So three months, I mean, we could go for six months, but three months, I guess we could say Bhakti Siddhanta was being nice to us, so he wouldn't have to sit so long. <laughs> But this is, uh, this is the quality or characteristics of transcendental knowledge. It's, the word is dynamic. Dynamic. So I'll give you a little step-by-step -step, uh, understanding of how things should unfold. And this is the example of whether you're actually reading properly or not, or hearing properly. First comes hearing or Reading, that's step one. Two comes understanding, now trying to understand it from different angles. Three comes um, application, seeing how to apply this knowledge in our practice of Krishna consciousness. Four comes the realizations that we get from the application. And five comes the qualities, skills, abilities that we develop on our personal level by the application of this knowledge. These are the five steps. Uh, hearing, understanding, applying, realizing, and then characteristics and qualities appear. So that is the complete principle of knowledge. This, this is within these five, everything is there through the process of proper reading and proper uh, application. Yeah. So therefore this knowledge is great. Right now in our particular uh, historical period of less movement, very little movement, we have uh, opportunities to fix within our schedule more and more time for reading and studying. And so that is good because that allows us to go deeper into this knowledge. Okay, so um, I like to usually hear the questions from the devotees. So we'll stop here and see what kind of questions or comments Thank you so much, Ma Maharaj. Such a deep class on Bhagavatam. And like you said, there's the, the one line can go on forever. Thank you so much for speaking about the glories of Bhagavatam. If there are any questions or 
comments, uh, realizations, reflections, please do uh, unmute yourself and ask. I believe there's one from Parikshit Prabhu. Pr you, you can go ahead, Parikshit. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, if you accept the humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, glories to you. Um, you said in the Srimad Bhavatan, there are 10 subject matters. Mm -hmm. um, you give one example about family life and then also the proper reading and what would benefit from it. Yeah, um, um, you want to know those 10 subject matters? If you can summarize them or if you can tell me where I can find them, that would be nice. Maybe um, maybe uh, Anasuya can post this one verse, I think. Uh, second Canto, 10th uh, chapter, verse number one, 210 one, I believe it is. Okay. Let's see, if she, let's see if I'm right on this one. I think I am, but I'm, I could be wrong. Second chapter. Second canto. Se, second yeah. canto. Chapter 10. Tenth chapter, verse number one. one. Okay. Two ten one. Vrinda's going to pull it up, Maharaj. Let's see if I'm right. I'm not 100% certain. I, let's see. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Translation. In the Bhagavatam, there are 10 divisions of statements regarding the following. The creation of the universe, sub-creation, planetary systems, protection by the Lord, the creative impetus, the change of manus, the science of God, returning home back to Godhead, liberation, and the Sunam Bonum. So these are the 10. Thank you very much, Mark. Two, ten, one. yeah. Thank and you. I should say that in some of the cantos, they concentrate on one of the subjects, but in general, these, um, like the sub-creation and creation are mostly in the first and second canto, but you also find parts of that in the 11th canto too. So it's not like each of the cantos concentrates on one of the subjects, but we might say that in some of the cantos, some of the, some of these subjects are giving more emphasis like that. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay. Are there other questions from devotees, uh, reflections, realizations? Um, Maharaj, I have a question on, um, as you were speaking about Srimad Bhagavatam, trying to look for my question here. Where did I put that? Oh, there, there it is. Um, Maharaj, one of your questions, as you were speaking about Bhagavatam and um, you were sharing how um, people in general know more about the Bhagavad Gita as opposed to the Bhagavatam. And I, I know in, um, in the month of September during the Bhadra Purnima month is when we distribute Bhagavatam sets and which is really nice that we distribute them, but how can we um, um, encourage devotees to um, distribute Bhagavatam and encourage them to, to hear? Because what I've seen with, in some instances where we are giving the mercy by giving you know, newcomers or you know, whoever the Bhagavatam, but it just sits and collects dust. Yeah. And if that is Krishna, then is it okay to um, be, uh, use our discretion to give the one to the right person or we just give it freely and let it just sit there? I'm trying well, to get a better understanding of this, marriage. There is benefit just by having it in your home. That's even if it just sits on the shelf, it's like a deity. As Bhagavatam is an incarnation of Krishna in literary form. So it's a, it's a deity, there are benefits. But we were discussing this yesterday, one of the ways we can get people is that when you distribute them, you could follow up and contact them again and ask them if they're reading it, what they're reading, how much they understand. In other words, kind of a follow up. That's one way. And the other way is to create these Bhagavatam discussion groups where a few devotees who kind of know each other or maybe just 
you know, want to get together with other devotees and, and set up a discussion group. And then they can read, they read a section from the Bhagavatam, and then they discuss it amongst themselves and get some ideas about what's, what's being read. So some of our devotees who, who are online now, they every day they have a Bhagavat, Bhagavat discussion group comes up later on today. So that's, uh, so we started that just recently within the last few months. So that's one way to get that dust from, from, from not accumulating. <laughs> So two things, try to follow up or see if you can inspire people to uh, get into discussion. And you have this great literature. Now, take some time to learn it. Yep. Thank you, Maharaj. Are there other questions from devotees about the glories of Bhagavatam or Anything, I'm sure Marj would answer, like I say, Marj would answer any questions on any topics. Hare Krishna, uh, please accept my humble obeisances, our glories to Srila Prabhupada, and our glories to you, Guru Maharaj, and our glories to other devotees. Uh, thank you very much for uh, these uh, important points. Actually, this last part, uh, when you spoke about uh, how to unfold uh, uh, certain parts of the scriptures, it uh, really uh, uh, touched my heart because uh, recently I, um, I started to think uh, how much important uh, uh, it is uh, for us to, um, to be more self-controlled. I mean, um, not to, uh, to be more, con more controlled. And uh, this, uh, these five uh, points, uh, I, I'm, I think that maybe these, these are the key. Uh, so can it, can it help us or is it just uh, we, so from hearing uh, comes uh, self-control or, or uh, maybe we can do otherwise? Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I think something like this. I, I'm not yeah. sure. From hearing comes, yeah, comes understanding. Um, I, I think you might have took part in my uh, presentation on Bhagavatam. And in that, it's a slideshow. has about, about 65 slides. It was put together by uh, Lakshmi Moni. And uh, it's really intelligently designed. In that, she, she makes these points and then she expands on each one of them. Mm -hmm. So I've given that presentation many times. Uh, and I think yes. maybe you, you might have took part at least once. Uh, yes, I've heard it uh, uh, two or three times, actually. Yeah, so in, after those five things are mentioned, there's a follow-up on each one of them. Mm -hmm. I see. So if you... Uh, want to explore that deeper yeah i i will uh, check it out again then because uh, there is recording of uh, of those so so i can i can review yeah yeah these five things are pretty much foundational for the whole process of reading and getting the results of the reading mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, may I ask about this fourth point, because maybe it's also there, so uh, I, I, I don't know. But uh, it can be that my English is not sufficient for this, but uh, this uh, fourth part, that what exactly realization means, is uh, somehow I don't really uh, catch the, the, the essence of it. Realization is intuitive knowledge, knowledge that becomes understandable. Mm -hmm. There is theoretical knowledge, and then there's there's called Gyan and Vigyan. Gyan is theoretical knowledge, and Vigyan comes from the word Vishishta, or no, I mean, 
is it? Vishishta, yeah, Vishishta Gyan, which means intensification of knowledge. So the intensification means realization. Um, giving an, an analogy would be if you sit into, you're sitting into a restaurant and you order your, you sit down and the waiter will bring you a menu. So you can look at the menu and you get all ideas. You may even inquire about how each of the preparations are cooked and what are the ingredients, but the realization or the benefit of the, of your whole trip to the restaurant is eating. And when you eat, then you understand everything. You get the benefit, you get the energy, you get nourishment, you get happiness. So we can read, we can study, but when we apply, when the application comes, leads to us understanding the knowledge in a practical way. Mm -hmm. Mm, I see. It's uh, thank you very much. It's uh, it's, it's like, just I think like it's we, could, we can say we can say, well, we're not this. I am not this body. We all say that so many times. Oh, I'm not this body. But have we realized it? Yeah, yeah. It's a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. And uh, regarding uh, applying it, uh, for example when uh, when we know that uh, we should be humble but sometimes uh, we we try to apply it on uh, i mean externally but internally uh, it's it's still we feel this uh, uh, how to uh, say to being uh, f feeling offended so it's also applying it or or uh, we should also try to to cultivate some mood. So is it also applying inside and outside or it starts with outside? Well, uh, hearing, uh, hearing is the first thing. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, then, and then applying. Hearing and then understanding and then, then, then applying. Mm -hmm. So it starts internally and then it manifests as external. And then the realization comes internally. Uh, yes, I just uh, uh, meant that uh, when we start to apply, uh, sometimes uh, it's, uh, we can apply it externally, but, uh, but internally, uh, although we, we know the, the philosophy. Yeah, well, that'll, that'll take time. Mm -hmm. One of the, the process of real, realization is a, is a process. It's applying both, both the knowledge and the devotion in a, in a systematic way as given by the, the scriptures and as given by the spiritual teachers. And then as you do that, gradually you move forward towards realizing what you're practicing. Uh, just like, you know, two, two people are chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. One is chanting with offense and another one is chanting with pure love. Both are chanting. So it's a process to go from offensive chanting through the different stages to get to the process. Of, mm -hmm. But you apply the knowledge in the proper way given by the bona fide authority, and it works. The application requires consistency. Consistency means in a determined way. If you Thank expect, you well, I'm practicing humility, but I'm still not humble yet, that means you have to keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like you know, it's not a, it's not going to fall out of the sky. It'll come gradually as you apply the principles and the activities. Thank you very much. It, it was really really helpful. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Patience, one of the six symptoms of surrender. 
Yeah, I, I have to work on that one, <laughs> I suppose. Thank eagerness, you. eagerness has to be coupled with patience, and patience is fortified by determination. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're determined and you're enthusiastic, but now patience has to come. Patience has to be there before results come. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the nice question. Are there any other questions? Wait, I think I got a chat. Okay, there is a question. Maharaj in the chat and I'm going to read it out. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. You mentioned that Srila Prabhupada, Srimad Bhagavatam purports are more than enough for a devotee. How should we respond to others seeing this understanding as inconsiderate of other commentators? Uh, versions of the Bhagavatam and adamantly blocking out extra knowledge. How can we explain that Sri Prabhupada's Bhaktam is enough and perfect in itself? It is. <laughs> and that's an experience. But, uh, you know, how do you explain that, what food tastes like? You can give the ingredients, you can tell you how people, how you cooked it. Hey, they got to taste it. And if they're honest, they will agree. But... To get more into detail about that whole thing is that uh, Prabhupada's presentation of Bhagavatam includes eight commentaries by the previous Acharyas, such as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Jiva Goswami, uh, uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Sridhar Swami. Prabhupada, there's one book, it's somewhere in this guy, I don't know who has it. But it's the book that Srila Prabhupada used, which had all the which had all the commenta commentaries of the previous acharya on the entire Bhagavatam, and Prabhupada referred to that. That's why you see some verses have purports and other verses don't. Where the previous acharyas didn't give a purport, Prabhupada generally followed that, not trying to overdo the previous acharya. And so, yeah, Prabhupada's per uh, presentation oh. includes at least eight other personalities who, who have given commentaries on the Srimad Bhagavatam. But he condensed it all, he synthesized it all, and, he, and then he added his own realizations. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing when you understand the process. <laughs> It's just mind blowing. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Maharaj. Those and you, you can't really convince somebody until they actually have some experience. This is this idea today that everybody's whatever you do, it's okay because we're all equal. <laughs> Where is, where is the scripture saying in the material world, there's no equality. Something is better, something is less, something is terrible, something is grand. It's all, material means different, pers different levels of, of existence. Mars, there's um, two more. Uh, there's a question by Sri Devi, which I'll ask her first, and then I'll read the one in the chat. So, Sri Devi Mataji, you can go ahead, Prabhu. Thank you, Anusia. Please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you so much for this uh, absolutely, again, another wonderful lecture on the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. I'm still thinking about number five, about the square skills and qualities that we develop as a result of uh, studying. And I couldn't quite get that. Would you be so kind as to give us an example 
of how one by one it leads to that and and some practical example of this well you become like what you are try, trying to become like you're trying to become krishna conscious and in be becoming krishna consciousness there's certain qualities characteristics that come to the forefront as you're developing your krishna consciousness instead of being external and you actually become humble instead of just thinking and practicing humility. You actually become tolerant instead of thinking and practicing tolerance. These the qualities and characteristics take root. You actually develop strong memory. You actually develop the ability to understand things. So, in other words, it's a manifestation of the of the qualities of the soul that starts to become uh, revealed into the consciousness into the waking consciousness of the devotee who practice it these, these characteristics are there we have 78 percent of the char the qualities of krishna in small quantity so, but how much of that we actually experience or using? So as you develop more in Krishna consciousness, these qualities start to manifest and start to become part of your nature, which is your nature. It's just now coming to the, to the level of realization, that's all. You realize that the holy name is none different than Krishna. You realize you're not this body. You realize you have nothing to do with this material world. We talk theory, but theory won't, won't get you back to Godhead. You have to come to realizations. Thank you, Maharaj. Sri Devi Mataji, did that help? I'm, I'm sure. Oh, yes, very much. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Anasuya. Thank you. Marj, there's a question from Xavier on the chat. Hare Krishna, Marj, please accept my humble obeisance. So, glory to Shri Prabhupada. What is the ideal perspective to view Maya? Obviously, we should be on guard to the tests that Maya tries to trap us with, but Maya is also acting on behalf of Krishna, right? So should we view Maya as this dark demonic force portrayed as the devil in Christian world? Hare Krishna. No, not at all. Prabhupada said Maya is our friend. Another name for Maya is mercy. That's given in translations, or in the transliterations in the synonym sections of the Bhagavatam when the word Maya is used, it's called mercy. No, she's there to um, bring you, make you more Krishna conscious, that's all. But for the non-devotees, she's different. She just punishes them because they're trying to enjoy her and she's not meant to be enjoyed. It's like if you try to enjoy another person's wife, you're gonna, you might get killed. So in the same way, if you try to enjoy Maya, she's going to kick you, that's all. But for a devotee, it's different. She's mercy. She just makes us aware of our attachments and our weak points. And that helps us to become uh, more aware of where we are what we say weak or where do we need to work on so she helps she's the friend of the devotee and the punisher of the non-devotees Maharaj when you oh I'm sorry, Maharaj, I didn't mean to jump in front of you. I, I have a question following up what you just talked about, Maharaj, about Maya. If, if Maya 
is mercy for a devotee and a punisher for a non-devotee. Sometimes as you know, devotees use this term, you know, I was just in Maya, <laughs> right? How can they see themselves that that was mercy or how can a devotee, when they see someone else getting, you know, doing things that they shouldn't do with, with the attachments, how can we help them realize? Because sometimes devotees don't like to hear, you know, that you were in Maya. Well, when you get out of Maya, I've been in Maya, but I'm out of Maya. I'm actually better off now. <laughs> in other words, Maya means means to play with the with something that is not going to uh, bring us closer to Krishna. It's going to take us away from Krishna. If we're infatuated by Maya. Then Maya will capture us and we'll forget Krishna. And just like to be aware that you have forgotten is also a form of mercy. Oh, I'm not remembering Krishna. I'm in Maya, therefore I should remember Krishna. Now I remember Krishna, I get out of Maya. Thank you, Maharaj. Sri Devi, do you have another question? I see your hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to pull it down. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Are there other questions, uh, comments, reflections, realizations on this wonderful topic or any topic of Krishna consciousness, any topic that we can ask? Please. Okay. Diptesh Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to you Maharaj. Maharaj, just wanted to add a comment um, on what you mentioned, where you said that the realization on these verses go very deep. And I attended one of the uh, Bhagavad Mahatmya uh, sessions from the School of Bhakti here a few years ago. And the analogy was given in some of the scriptures, I can't remember which one, but it says that. Uh, every bird has got different ability to fly. So a pigeon, a sparrow may fly at a certain height and the crow will fly uh, at a certain height more than sparrow and the eagle will fly uh, at the topmost height. So similarly, according to one's realization, you can go deep and deep and deep and there's no end uh, to the, these Bhagavatam verses and the revelations. So when you said, uh, mentioned that they're, you know, uh, giving the example of different meanings, uh, you spend 26 uh, commentaries of different acharyas or 26 different points that could be extracted. I was thinking about that because yeah, well, in Bhagavatam, we, we kind of scheme it through or at least, you know, we, we look at it, but then again, it's upon individuals realization that you can dive deep and there's no end to that depth. Yeah, and that's why we should hear from those who are qualified to speak, and then we can learn more. Yes. And that inspire us. That inspires us to go deeper by learning more. So I thought I just wanted to share. Just that like you know, there are certain fishes that you never see because they stay very at, they stay at the bottom of the ocean. They never surface. They come. They don't come up. They stay at the bottom but they're there. So the ones we know of are the ones on the top, but still that doesn't rule out the fact that in the very bottom of the ocean, there's fishes we've never seen before. Because they're deep. You know, there's so much in the, in the scriptures that are so deep that it's unlimited. Bodhiantas parasparam katiantas chamam dicham tusyanti cha ramanti cha. And the more we discuss it, the more we, we unravel more of the meanings. That's why that's this, this discussion is actually a very uh, integral part of our, our um, making progress in devotional service. We should be eager to hear and we should be eager to understand more based on what we hear.
Marge, how does one develop the eagerness to want to hear? Yeah, it's, that's mentioned in, uh, you can bring up the verse, the first canto, um, second chapter, 1, 2, 16. It's directly stated by Sutta Goswami in the very beginning of the Bhagavatam. 1, 2, 16. Shru Shru Shro Shradhana Siya Vasa Deva Kata Ruchi Shanayat Seva Sevaya Vipra Punya Tirtana Sevana. O twice born sages, by serving those devotees who are completely free from all vice, great service is done. And by such service, one gets an affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudeva. Correct. <laughs> Serving great devotees awakens the desire to hear about Krishna more and more. Thank you, Maharaj. That's direct. It is. I was just having this this realization, this thought that just came into my mind that from the beginning of the first canto of chapter one up until chapter three, every verse has some connection that 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 boils down to service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Everything is just it comes down to service. Anything just comes down to service. It's just amazing. Yeah comes in serving the Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes. But even when we serve in the material sense, we get, an, we get an understanding of things through that service. We get an understanding of people when we serve. We get an understanding of our own selves when we serve. We get an understanding of the, the activities that we're doing in the process of serving. So knowledge is revealed by service. Thank you, Maharaj. That's a question by Mother Gita. Go ahead, Mother. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. All glories to you. Maharaj, uh, just now you read that verse which said that we should serve the devotees. So if they are not physically present, how do we serve them? I mean, not physically present in front of us. Hmm. Well, here we are. We're online. <laughs> I'm trying to serve you by giving the speaking this and you're trying to serve by hearing that service so we our, our service has been relegated to a less less of a personal contact we're more through the media now but we can always serve if you're spir serving this if, if you have a spiritual master and you're serving the spiritual master by following his instructions, then that's the same thing. We're serving Srila Prabhupada, though he's not personally present by following his instructions. Service is going on. Thank you, Maharaj. The help? Was that, was that helpful? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah. Are there any questions? Okay, I think I got a chat here. That's just an announcement. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. If, are there any other questions or comments, uh, reflections, realizations before we end the class? Don't want to miss anybody. Okay, I think I went to the list. Oh, Hare Krishna Manisha, go ahead. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam, Shri Guru Maharaji. I just have a quick reflection in um, after hearing uh, Gita Mataji's um, question that um, and Maharaji's response. I was already thinking that about the service that I'm so thankful not only to, of course, Guru Maharaji, all of Guru Maharaji's servants, direct servants, helpers for this program, but also all of the attendees of all the Zoom meetings and classes, because it's the, 
a great service that each one is doing by just attending and mm -hmm. sharing their thoughts and uh, you know positivity. That's a service in itself because just attending and being in the congregation, it makes such a humongous difference. Like the verses from the first canto, like you said, Anusia Mataji, the like uh, cantos one to three, even like uh, during the pandemic, reading by myself at home, sometimes, you know, you grasp it when you're reading it, but after that, the information, it just goes by, goes over your head. But being in the congregate setting and having Sri Guru Maharaj Ji, like uh, in the first original verse that we discussed today, you know, a pure devotee in the disciplic succession, hearing it from them and at the appropriate time with the appropriate meaning, it makes such a big difference that at that point, the knowledge, it does enter your heart. And reading by yourself is definitely not the same. So coming to the meetings, sharing your thoughts, asking your questions, not only is it benefiting you, but it's benefiting everyone else in the class. So I just want to thank everyone, like uh, touch their holy feet and say thank you and uh, encourage everyone to keep attending as many classes as you can and keep sharing your thoughts, reflections, and asking questions. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Manisha. Uh, Anasuya, there's a verse that came to mind when Manisha was speaking. Can you bring it up? <laughs> yes. Vrinda? Yes, Marge, yeah. if you can get the verse, Marge. Yeah, it's third canto, 25th chapter, 25th verse. 325. 325. Vrinda, 325, 25, Vrinda. Hmm. And this illustrates what uh, Manisha just said. Satam prasangam mamavirya sam vidho bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata najosina aspapa varga vartmani sradir ratir bhaktir anukramishyati. In the association, you want to read that, Anasuya? Yes, Maharaj. Yes. In the translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. In the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and thereafter he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed, then real devotion and devotional service begins. Last line, then real devotion and devotional service begins. It's fundamental to this whole verse. Okay. Yeah, you want to read the purport? You can, it might yes. be a little. Yeah. Brenda, can you go down? Thank you. The process of advancing in Krishna consciousness and devotional service is described here. The first point is that one must seek the association of persons who are Krishna conscious and who engage in devotional service. Without such association, one cannot make advancement. Wow. Simply by theoretical knowledge or study, one cannot make any appreciable advancement. One must give up the association of material materialistic persons and seek the association of devotees because without the association of devotees, one cannot understand the activities of the Lord. Generally, people are convinced of the impersonal feature of the absolute truth. Because they do not associate with devotees, they cannot understand that the absolute truth can be a person and have personal activities. This is a very difficult subject matter, and unless one has personal understanding of the absolute truth, there is no meaning to devotion. Service or devotion cannot be offered to anything impersonal. Service must be offered to a person. Non-devotees cannot appreciate Krishna consciousness by reading the Srimad Bhagavatam or any other Vedic literature wherein the activities of the Lord are described. They think of these activities, are fic they think that these activities are fictional, manufactured stories because spiritual life is not explained to them in the proper mood. To understand the personal activities of the Lord, one has to seek the association of devotees, and by such association, one can contemplate 
and tries to understand the transcendental activities of the Lord. The path to liberation is open and he is freed. One who has, one who has firm faith and the supreme personality of God had becomes fixed and his attraction for association with the Lord and the devotees increases. Association with devotees mean association with the Lord. The devotee who makes this association develops the consciousness for rendering service to the Lord. And then being situated in a transcendental position of devotional service, he gradually becomes perfect. Everything is there in that, ver in that purple. It's just outstanding, Maharaj. It's just outstanding. It's Thank you, Manisha, for bringing it up because as you said, even if they come on, people come online and they just listen, you know, they're, they're getting the benefit of the association and the knowledge that is being given. And as the verse says, then, uh, what is it? Stradir Bhaktir Anukramishyati. Gradually, gradually, they make progress to, uh, to, you know, they become fixed and real devotional service begins. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It is your extreme causeless mercy upon me. Thank you so much, all devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Such a beautiful verse. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's one of the foundational verses. Yes. And it's I I know for for me, um, my Maharaj, in you know, being in Gitanagi for so many years, for some reason, I I never had the good fortune to had the yeah to sit in class every morning because of service in the kitchen pujari something something and 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 i've always had that hankering you know when will i ever had the opportunity to hear you know to really uh, learn and 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 hear about with them every morning and krishna is so kind that he is able to um uh you know fulfill my desire by having me attend classes every day for weekdays it's been so 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 nice and it's so nice to be with the devotees. It's just been so blissful. It, it just shows that you were totally surrendered to giving service and by, by the perfection of your service, you're now actually talking about service. <laughs> <laughs> Marge, you're so kind to me, Marge. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just giving the logical, philosophical <laughs> explanation. <that's all. laughs> Thank you, Marge. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions or comments, reflections, realizations? Okay. If there isn't much, we thank you so much, Marge. We, um, we look forward to your class every other Thursday. It's always um, so nice that I, I, I'm glad that your class can go longer <laughs> than all the other classes because we really get greedy to take your your association and your darshan and your advice and everything, Marge. And we thank you so much for giving us your time whenever you come online. And we look forward to your visit whenever this whole pandemic stops so that we can serve you, Marge. And also the devotees that are online. And we thank you all so much for joining this class and making it such a blissful discussion. Thank you. I still remember my visit to Harrisburg a couple of years ago. <laughs> Yes, Marge. I remember the 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 homemade bread that Prakshit made for you. <laughs> Which was really good. <laughs> yes, he makes good bread. <laughs> it was super excellent. And I also remember how in the temple we did an it was initiation ceremony also. Yes, and it was not the kind that we are used to, but Marge, you was you, but it was a different kind. But you were so tall. Oh, Marge, wait! Before I forget, that's a question by Brett. I'm, I, I apologize. He just put his hand up. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. Please all glories to Sri Guru Prabhupada. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Um, yes. Just, just a reflection on just this purport and what Manisha was saying. This was a conversation that I had with a devotee. Um, and Maharaj, if you could just speak on it, if you could then. Um, but the reflection was that um, I was saying that I like to think of as like, when we come together in these group discussions, as Manisha was saying with, you know, our viewpoints, 
we come to ask questions no matter what's on our mind, you know, just the association together. My realization when I spoke with this devotee was um, thinking of devotees as like children kicking and screaming in that milky ocean, asking questions, having different emotions, playing, doing whatever. And then Krishna is just laughing in ecstasy at, you know, all the other emotions and in joyful bliss at our questions and our helplessness and things like that. And I just thought that was something beautiful to reflect on when thinking of this association and this purport of 32525. Yeah, Krishna is enjoying our our attempt to become Krishna conscious. <laughs> So the point is, that, like I was saying, get get involved when you're in that water, kicking and screaming, you know, get louder, ask your questions, no matter what they are, no matter what your feelings are. You know, as Manisha was saying, it's just a beautiful thing to come together and, and speak. Yeah, and it's also kind of like something that is life-saving at this particular point. Maybe before we didn't really appreciate the, uh, the importance of Sangha because it was so easily available. Now, it's not so easily available in one sense, and it takes on a different, sort of a different mood, but still, now we can appreciate, I think, at least that's my experience, there's a more of appreciation now. I love how bluntly you put it, Maharaj, <laughs> by saying it's life-saving and it's uh, the appreciation behind it. And I think of, you know, us kicking and screaming, Krishna just tossing in little lifesaver rings, little floaties to help us out. So thank you, Hare Krishna. <laughs> okay, thank you. So my obeisances to all the devotees. His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Ki Jai. Ki Jai. Um, is Lavanya online? Lavanya, are you there? No, Guru Maharaj. She's not there, Lavanya? No, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. I, I can send her a message. No, I just wanted her to announce. I'm doing another program this afternoon, and she has the information. Oh, sure. I have. I can pull it up and make the announcement. One second. Okay. It's at 6 o'clock uh, CET time, Central European time. Yes, Guru Maharaji. That is uh, 7 a.m. Uh, okay. Uh, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. So that'll be 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And uh, that is a class uh, Guru Maharaji will be giving today. Uh, guest speaker, His Holiness Chandramali Swami um, and Her Grace uh, Raja Leela Devi Dasi. Uh, we are happy to and honored to announce the Thursday lecture with His Holiness Chandramali Swami and Her Grace Raja Leela, De, De, Leela, Raja Leela Dasi from U.S. Gita Nagri, a senior disciple of His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami. We will receive enlightening wisdom and very profound insights as well as practical guidelines on how to deepen our devotee care propensities through acts of serving, remembering, and glorifying. Significance of devotee care in a time of crisis, glorifying and remembering devotees, the lecture will be uh, today, starting at um, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Central Time. And I'll share this message with uh, Anusuya Mataji. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so she can share with the, all of the participants of this class. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mani. Isha. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you to all the devotees. And again, thank you so much, Maharaj. And we look forward to your next class and your next visit. <laughs> Arivo, all the Shushu Prabhupada. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj Janvat Pranam. Hare Krishna.